Remember the 2008 financial crisis in the US? Uh, well, remember uh, news uh, being reported in our houses of stock market crashing and uh, giant bear mods, financial companies being on the brink of bankruptcy. Names that we have probably heard like Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, Lehman Brothers and all the rest. Stock markets bottoming out and uh, millions of people being about desperate about their jobs and so on. Wall Street bankers, business school, economists, they all were wrong and it seems that they didn't have a clue of what was going on. But how did this happen? It required the like of Christian Bell, Brad Pitt, Ryan Gosling, Steve Gomez, Margot Robbins, Selena Gomez and even Anthony Bourdain to explain to the general people in the movie in 2015, the big short, what happened to the US in the financial crisis and how this crisis spread to the rest of the world. There isn't a better way to tell a tragedy than to have a comedy. The Big Short tells the story of how four professionals in the industry spotted the rot in the US economic system and tried to take advantage out of it. Let's begin our story by understanding the housing market. Most people normally go to a bank and take a loan, a mortgage, in order to buy their house. Bank does their inquiry, these people have income, so normally these are safe loans, in the sense that they are backed up by the income of the person and by the value of the house. And somebody had an idea. What if we can connect uh, these safe mortgages uh, to investors so that they can also invest in these mortgage-based products and maybe get a higher return. So that's what happened. Based on financial innovation, these loans, mortgages were put together into product known as collateralized debt obligations. Not surprisingly, the demand for this product grew larger over time. After all, they were safe and they were paying a higher interest. So banks started to amass together more and more mortgages, but at a certain moment, they ran out of prime mortgages and they had to start putting together mortgages that were given to people that were a bit less reliable. These are the subprime mortgages. In a fascinating sequence in the film, we see Steve Carell and his team going to Florida and finding out that houses were in a dog's family name or a stripper having five houses and five mortgages to pay without a clear income. Now, I probably look different than Margot Robbins in a bathtub sipping champagne, but I'll try to be as simple as she has been in the movie. Imagine 100 houses, and some of them owned by people like the stripper in the movie, without a clear mean to repay those mortgages. Now, imagine that you pack the mortgages of these 100 houses into these products. The higher the share of the subprime mortgages into the products, the less likely is that these people are going to repay the mortgages, and therefore the financial stream that entered into this product becomes shakier. The more and more subprime mortgages you put into these products, the shakier and shakier becomes the financial stream of money that enters into this product, and therefore this product from safe become risky, to the point that they might even risk defaulting. What the four protagonists of the movie do, they spot this rot in the system and they try to take advantage of it. What they do, they convince investment banker to create a product for them, a product like an insurance, which is called a credit default swap. This credit default swap allows these people to bet against this product. So the lower their value, the higher their insurance value, and they can make money out of it. Interestingly, investment bankers at the beginning are very skeptical about the nature of their product and very skeptical about the fact that the housing market might collapse. But they still create the product. Why? Because in the end they can take management fees out of it. So if you want to structure a product and pay for it, why not? Over time, however, investment banks realize that maybe there is some truth in this. Investment banks create these CDOs and sell it to investors and at the same time they buy protection through a credit default swap against the product that they are selling. So what happened? I am creating a product and selling to an investor and I'm buying protection from another bank. A bank does the same, in the end there is a giant web of connection where everybody has insured against the risk of somebody else. So a small default on one of those CDOs back in August 2007 in the end causes an avalanche that triggers $5 trillion of wealth which evaporates, 6 million people losing their house and many more millions of people become unemployed all over the world. There are lots of things to learn for a finance manager from this movie. 
Think at the character of Christian Bale. He spends hours and hours studying uh, financial data and then he spots a single anomaly. The San Jose housing market diverging from the fundamentals during the dot-com bust. From here, he starts wondering what would happen to the current situation when mortgages are given to subprime people and realizes that the situation itself is unsustainable, so he can make a profit betting against this. He's stubborn, is very convinced of what he has seen thanks to his dedication and knowledge, and he convinces his investors to speculate against the housing market, something that when he makes this decision was unthinkable at the time. He keeps going, he makes losses, his fund has very paltry returns compared to the others, but he sticks to his own ideas. In the end, he would make a spectacular profit, 489% returns for those investors that have been remaining with him over his time. It is not so easy to take advantage of such a situation when a market is such overconfident, when everybody believes that everything is going well, and when a market is so complicated the equations behind the collateralized debt obligation were developed by nuclear physicists because the math was so advanced. In a complicated world as the financial one, it requires a deep technical knowledge, hours and hours of study and dedication to understand what the situation is, try to have a correct forecast and make a profit out of it. At the end of the movie, we learn that the real character that Christian Bell plays is still making investments and now is going bullish with one commodity, water.